Well, it's been a year now since the Ebola outbreak was officially declared by the World Health Organization, and the head of the UN's emergency response team now says that he expects it to all be over by the end of August. More than 10,000 people have died, nearly all of them in the West African countries of Guinea, Sierra Leone and Liberia. However, we do have charities coming out, MSF being one of them, saying there has been no significant decline in the number of Ebola cases since late January. Here's our global health correspondent, Tulip Mazunda. Slowly and very cautiously, life is returning to some degree of normality. Schools have reopened in Liberia after six months of children being told to stay away. But at the height of the outbreak, Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone were under siege. Our BBC team watched as patients were turned away from full treatment centres. This man, Francis Samuka, later died. In a damning report, the medical charity MSF says the world ignored its calls for help early in the outbreak. It's particularly critical of the World Health Organization for not declaring an international health emergency much sooner. It increased the spread because we weren't able to mobilize enough resources to jump on uh, out, uh, in isolated outbreaks. Then uh, the mobility of the West African population meant that uh, people were moving huge distances and we weren't able to, uh, to react quickly enough. The world has come a long way since the peak of the Ebola outbreak. Back in November in Sierra Leone, there were almost 600 new cases a week. Now it's fewer than 60. Liberia had managed around three weeks without a new infection, but it's now recorded at least one fresh case. And look at what's happening in Guinea. After infections fell sharply, they're gradually creeping up again. Until there are zero cases recorded in all three countries for at least six weeks, this outbreak will not be considered over. This month, a timely reminder of the global threat the virus continues to pose. A British military health worker is still being treated for Ebola after being flown home from Sierra Leone. She will receive the best possible treatment with potential access to experimental drugs. But for those who've been fighting this outbreak since the start, many challenges still lie ahead. The biggest mistake we could make now is to see Ebola de decline and think the job's done. The ripple effects of this outbreak have been enormous. A lot of services have decreased, surgical services are down, vaccinations, uh, antenatal care for pregnant women, the ability to access a skilled midwife when you need to deliver. All of these have been dramatically affected and so it's a top priority at the moment to get those services back online. Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone have lost hundreds of health workers to Ebola. There are urgent calls now for their decimated health systems to be rebuilt to help ensure an outbreak this deadly can never return to West Africa. Tulip Mazumdar, BBC News. With me here in the studio is Claire Hill. She's a British nurse who has just returned from Sierra Leone. She was working with the Red Cross at a treatment centre in Kono in the east of the country. Welcome home, Claire. What Thank an experience you. it must have been for you. How did you see life change for people there because of Ebola? I mean, life has changed for pretty much everyone as far as I could see when I was out there. Um, lots of children around, no schools. Schools were meant to reopen at the beginning of March where I was in Sierra Leone, but that's been postponed until the end of April, so these, you can imagine. These kids have lost their parents, I suppose. There's lots of orphan children. There's, I mean, there's no public gatherings anymore. Everyday life has just completely changed from what I could gather. And we're seeing pictures now that, that you took when you were out there. Were you surprised by the actual reality of being there? And look at you here, the amount of checks that you had to go through every day, getting suited up, protecting yourself. I mean, the bottom line is this whole Ebola thing, it is about basic standard precautions. It is preventable. These dressing up, um, wearing a spacesuit every day, all the, the phases of going into the high risk area, that just became a way of life for an entire month. Um, but it goes to show that if you can do all of those things, you can make a difference with the spread of the virus. Were you scared? Um, not really, to be honest. I think as soon as I heard about people being needed to go out there, I didn't think twice about it. What uh, about your friends and family though? They must have been they a were bit all worried for you. Very, very supportive. I mean, I bored them all with every fact and figure that I could think of. Um, and I mean, I work as a nurse, so I put myself at risk most days. You don't know 
what you're dealing with. But with this, everything, I mean, we had very thorough training in Geneva. Um, and it, like I said, it's all about standard precautions and infection control. And Claire, we've been hearing today from the UN's emergency response team, the head of that team, that he thinks Ebola could all be over by August. Did that feel realistic to you as, um, a, as target? I, th I mean, I'm very hopeful that that will be the case. Uh, all I can say is where I was working, there was a, an outbreak at the end of January. So this new hospital where I was in Kono had just opened to deal with that. And we just discharged our last confirmed patient the week that I left, which was last week. So I think when you can deal with it and it does make a difference and it, it sort of shut that whole situation down, brilliant. But there are lots of unreported cases in you know, rural villages. And briefly, Claire, you mentioned at the beginning that everything's changed for these people. What about for those that have been cured? and do leave, their lives must be changed forever. Is there sort of support for them, any sort of psychological support or help to, uh, so I they can get on with their lives? I think that is a really important part of it because obviously the stigma of Ebola victims, even like if they survive, where, what do they do, where do they go? But the Red Cross, and when we uh, discharged patients that were survivors, they're, they're set up with, I mean, there was a, a man that was basically offered lots more jobs than he's ever been offered in his, in his whole life because he was a survivor. We set them up with food and provisions just to get, get their life back, really. Um, and it's all about the psychosocial support of the community against people that have been affected by this Okay, virus. thanks for coming in and talking Thank to you us very much.